All right, guys, it is 7.38 on the 4th of January. I'm in my office for the first Thursday without football. I was just on the phone with a client, and he said, man, I see all this paper on your desk that you have all the time, arrows and numbers, but no names of teams. I said, I'm all about trading sports and beating the number. And so let me teach you about closing line value and what that means. What that means is if, and let's see if I get in focus. There we go. If, we'll just use this game. Uh, where's the 134? Uh, it's hard to read this backwards. Hold on. All right, let's use the first one. 138 under, 135 over. That's a three-point middle. That means that if I play the under, which I did, at 138, right, I beat the move by three points. If I played this game at 133, and then it went to 130, I beat the move by three points. Now, do I always middle the games? No, but if I have an opportunity and I have an edge, I will. Now, what does it take to be an arbitrager? Well, you have to beat the number, CLV, closing line value, which means if you're making your initial play, you have to assume that you're buying low and you're selling high, or you're selling high and you're buying low. It's no different than shorting or going long in the market. If I go under the total of 133 in a basketball game, I am assuming that that is the highest the total will be. And therefore, if the line comes down, I beat the number. That's the trading aspect. So at that point, I have two options. Leave it because I beat the number. Bet the other side if there's a big enough middle to make it worthwhile. Usually three points or more. Either risk the entire amount that I risk on the first wager, which means I'm risking 1% to win 200%. How so? $11 on both sides of the wager, you're risking $1 to win $20. That's 1% to win 200%. Or maybe less of a percentage. Maybe I have $10 on the first wager, $11 to win 10 on the first wager, under 133, and then maybe I might risk $5 on the second wager and have what's called a quarter middle. So, this is trading, and when you see these arrows, what you see, these are the same team. Opening number, closing number, opening number, closing number, opening number, closing number, opening number, closing number, where there's all opportunities. Now, I sent this sheet to one of my clients today, and he says, every number you played initially, you beat the number. Well, that's the only way you have a potential middle. If I go under 133 and the line goes to one set, 137, the line went against me by three points. There's no middle. There's no middle. Four points. There's no middle. So you have to be confident, and that's where the work comes in dealing with professional betting syndicates. So when people say things to me like, no analysis at all, pick dogs, you need a new boy. I am not a handicapper. I don't know anything about these games. I'm a numbers guy. I'm dealing with major betting syndicates that are trading games, middling games, and beating the number. That's all I am. I am... Sports Trading University, as Adam Larkin said, and I'm not Professor Eric. I'll go with Professor Paffy. I like the alliteration. I like the sound of that. Now, if I can teach you guys that this is how pros play. They're not looking at the names of the teams. They're not analyzing. It's all a bunch of gobbledygook nonsense. Now, handicapping at the, as the foundation is like the basement of the house, fine. I get it. But it's not the reason why the most successful bettors in the world aren't handicappers, right? Why the biggest bettors in the world, like Micah Smith, one of my partners, just won $400,000 in the FanDuel NFL contest, and his brother won $800,000 in the one the year before. Edge betting, no handicap. If you don't understand these principles, this is where you can utilize the Dime Club and learn. Now, a lot of people that text me, they don't understand when they ask me for records why I don't immediately give them to them, and I, I try to qualify. If you want to purchase the Dime Club for a week or for a month, I recommend having a minimum of $5,000, and be honest with your response. One client today sent me a text message saying, let's chat. 
I said, well, how much, what's your bankroll? He said, $1,300. I said, this is not for you. Have a great day. Keep taking in the free information. Head over to pickdogs.com. Purchase the information online with a guarantee. He said, thank you very much. Appreciate your videos. Appreciate what you do. The next guy sent me a text message. What's your bankroll? He said a couple thousand. I said, same thing. You don't really have enough money to work with. He wanted all my results, which I, could, I at the end gave him 12 weeks itemized. Didn't hear a response after that, of course. And But the point was, he said $2,000. And I said, well, it's probably not for you. He called me an insufferable prick because he didn't like the fact that I said it's probably not for him. And then he came back and he said he had a $7,600 bankroll. Would you go to your financial advisor and say, how much I got X, Y, Z to put in the fund? Oh, no, I have ABC to put in the fund. Most hedge funds require a minimum amount of money to keep the riffraff out. I basically run my sports advisory service in the same manner. I don't want to deal with clients. I don't want to deal with clients that are underfunded. They think that I'm going to take a small amount of money and turn it into a large amount of money. That's a pipe dream. That is not the world that I've been living in for the last 35 years. I'm in the world of you already have money to make more money. That's it. Sorry, guys. I'm not for everyone. If I was for everyone, I'd be selling $25 games online like everybody else. I am not. I run a syndicate. I'm here to beat the number. With that being said, hope you enjoyed today's class from Prof Professor Pappy. 775-636-7676. One week is a nickel. One month is a a dime. Guys, I have all the records. You hear them. I go over them each and every week here on the videos. But again, none of that matters if you're underfunded. None of that matters if you can't handle any volatility. None of that matters if you can't figure out how I made 148 units in the last 12 weeks, losing four consecutive weeks in a row. Yes, four consecutive weeks in a row plus 148 units. If that makes your head hurt, then you want to call me and say, let's chat if your bankroll is 50 grand or more. Your complimentary selection is to fade the Hawks. Hawks got an easy win yesterday against Oak City because nobody was playing for Oak City. We're going to take the Pacers minus four and a half on the overnight line. Good day and good luck.